Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. The first time he called, I heard velvet rustling through my ears, blending brainwaves hard enough to cut synapses from my knees. I felt them give out beneath me. <laughs> the first time he called, I felt my skin prickle, wanting more attention from this boy whose voice was pure caramel. My fingers twisted round the spiral telephone cord, just like they used to move across rosary beads. But this phone call was more sacred than any prayer had ever been. The second time he called, my body responded with murmurs and shudders. My heart pulsated and beats the rhythm of the engine of my mother's car. Two clangs and a thud and a stall, long enough to remind my lungs just how much they missed oxygen. Did you believe me when I told you it was because I ran upstairs to my room to answer your call? Or could you see through my fumbled lies? This boy could play my heartstrings like a harp, plucking hard enough to vibrate my entire body. His hands, those fingers, left angry red marks on my heart, and they have begun to scar. The trinity of phone calls. That was what ruined my line of defense. <laughs> you boy of adolescent dreams and lion pride ambitions and I, the court fool who threw away her intelligence in exchange for these beautiful lies. You made Ernest Hemingway look like child's play as I heard words dancing off your pages. <laughs> like secret messages exchanged across Auschwitz borders, we read our hearts to each other, hiding poetic fantasies and wondering whether the lines were tapped. Would they know how tender your kiss is from your voice? You wrote about the sickness of the world and how I was his remedy, as if I could make the world change with the whisper of my breath. Make the boundaries shake with the echoes of my choices. I was his cough medicine, all his medication. I was what he reached for on his shelf, and he... He was my muse, the idol of my admiration. The phone calls continued, and with them came the loss of my sanity. A total loss of control, and yet I never struggled. My butterfly collector. Three words soon left his mouth and vibrated air particles passing on the sound through electrical wiring, short-circuiting my heart. I felt my body burn. Everything was alive and moving and so loud and bright, but nothing was more beautiful than those three words, and they kept repeating and repeating and repeating on and on in my mind. I must have drove myself crazy. I could not hear anything else. This... This perfect being, a demigod who had travelled through time and space, surely... You must have been made for me, sculpted from the stars of our very existence. A true sign that a god did exist, this boy had chosen me. The mess of curls and trust issues, me. Only me. But as time passed, the calls no longer came like a rushing river. They turned into a soft, bubbling brook. And then, a dried-up patch of thirsting land. Stutter started sliding into where rapid, rampant words had stormed. The silence and static took the domain of our laughter. His fingers had forgotten their muscle memory. They staggered their movements, and they danced over my number. They had started forgetting. My name had started blending in with the others, and I would get no replies or questions about my day, and then my phone would stop ringing. <sighs> At first you skipped a day, then a week, and I started losing count. 
I switched my phone off and on again, but this was no technical issue I could fix. You didn't tell me that, but you'd called many other girls with the same manuka honey voice and made them tremble, but my body shook even more violently with each sob. I could not wash out the ringing in my ears or the memory of your touch or the smell of your cologne. Sometimes I still call, knowing very well you will not pick up the phone. <laughs> I like to listen to your answering machine because I get to hear your voice. Two beeps and then, hello, you've reached the invisible man. I cannot come to the phone right now because I have forgotten you. I sit. The silence cuts through me. You weren't hugging me or holding me, you were dissecting me, looking through my insides for fun. This was no candid exploration. From paper cuts to scalpels, I kept waiting for hello long after you had said goodbye.